Pretty Inspires Me, Episode 3. I got some crazy shit for you and I hope you enjoy it. Two things. I know that right now, I'm alive. And one day, I will be dead. And this is the nature of all of us. Everyone alive is going to go through this, through this path. They're going to find uh, different experiences in, in the middle of that path. And, and to some, it could be like a straight line. You know, a birth and then death. And then that's it. But what if there's more? What if there's more and we're barely starting to scratch the surface of, of what that more means? Uh, my book, The Dash, uh, The Walking Gods, I talk about this. Uh, the dash is actually represented in our tombstone as a space and time of where we lived. So if I was born in 1977 and I die in 2021, there'll be a little dash in the middle. And that dash represents a lot more than just time. For every single person living, they had some sort of a dream, some sort of a want they wanted to accomplish. I heard Les Brown say it the best. He said, the graveyard is full. It's full of people who never got a chance to truly live. It's full of people of, of things that were never invented and ideas that never manifested. So this would be uh, a linear reality would, would appear to us. Life and death. You're born at a certain age, time moves forward, and then you die, and that's your life. Is that so? So Les Brown says, in the cemetery, you're going to find dreams that never happened, that were never accomplished, ideas, inventions that never occurred. Uh, and he's right. You know, in, in this space-time reality, he's 100% right. However, however, what if? Now, we're going to go a little bit into the rabbit hole because I told you in the beginning that Wake Up, Poverty Inspires Me. The show is going to take you deep down that fucking rabbit hole, and that's exactly what I plan on doing. So let's go back to that statement, and let's say, okay, in this reality, it's 100% true. They never lived. Their dreams never happened, and they died, and nobody gives a fuck, right? So, all right, I beg to differ. I would say that it did happen and that they were able to somewhere in some place live that life that never happened here. I believe that we're consistently surrounded by a multiverse, a place of places. I want you to imagine you're, you're in a bubble, okay? And in this bubble, you're just floating around the room and all of a sudden, you see a whole bunch of other yous also in bubbles. Now, kind of like in parallel uh, universe uh, analogy, you're not really supposed to ever see your other self. But because we're not 100% conscious beings, let's say uh, we haven't developed this skill yet, let's just imagine that we have the skill to cross realities consciously. Because the truth is, I think that we cross them unconsciously all of the time. Lost something just to find it in the most random place that you know you looked, but it was there, and then it wasn't there. You ever lost your keys and tear apart your house looking for your keys, and the next thing you know, you find your keys in, in the most obvious place. So they can't be there, I, I swear. I looked, but they're there. Interesting. I know this has happened to you guys. I know it has because it happens to all of us. Maybe not keys. Maybe deja vu. Maybe we've been somewhere, but we don't remember, but we know we've been there. This is a very, very uh, documented phenomenon, so it's not like I'm talking about something that hasn't been talked about before. I'm just putting my own perspective on it. So let's just imagine that these bubbles, <coughs> excuse me, bubbles, Floating all around. Now, let's just for a moment say that you're asleep in the bubble. Okay? This is just for an example. You're sleeping in the bubble. Now, as you're floating in this world, your bubble, you're sleeping in there. Every so often, you, uh, you bump into another bubble. Let's just say these bubbles have the ability to merge. And then unmerge. So, for a slight moment, you merge with that bubble and unmerge with it. Continue on. You're still asleep in the bubble. 
Now imagine you woke up inside of the bubble. And now you see all of the other versions of yourself sleeping in their respective bubble. Wouldn't that be some really heavy shit? If you knew you were jumping timelines and you could do that shit consciously, wouldn't that be some real heavy shit? Well, I guess heavy would just be another perspective of possibilities. I think it'd be pretty fucking cool. And I know we do it. Do it all the time. Now, that version of yourself in some other place exists somewhere. Something. Some life you might have done something fabulous and another life you, you may have done something horrible. Both versions are equally real. And they continue forever and ever. Repeat themselves. Time is infinite without without a place to be. It just repeats like a loop, or you could say it's like a uh, tape uh, on repeat. See, most of us live our life in this this tape on repeat mindset, kind of stuck on stupid. So we don't give ourselves the possibilities to dream a little bit bigger than what we've been told. We take science and we say, that's what they say, so that's how it is. But do we really experiment or we just take their word for it? Do we try to learn about ourselves? You know, sometimes we're so focused on our external world that we can't even feel our own heartbeat. Tick tock, tick tock. <coughs> you, you see time time. It's always still, but moving. So what does that mean? Still, but moving. It's like an oxymoron, like you can't be two things at once. But can you? Well, if we go back to science, right, and we get our, our scientists, then they would tell us that what we're made of, the particles that make the human, can be in more than one place at one time. And it's very, very real phenomenon. Now, it's hard for the average person just to, to grasp their mind around this. To think that they're actually in the fucking rabbit hole itself. Instead of just thinking about it, you're actually in it. We can even take it a step further. I want you to think about your living room. Let's just assume you're not in your living room. If you are in your living room, let's just think about your bedroom. But for this purpose, let's think about your living room. Can you see what it looks like? Can you see where the furniture is? Does it have a smell to it? Is it clean? Can you, uh, can you feel what it feels like to sit on the couch? Watch TV to uh, turn the light on. Now open your eyes. If you're able to, to close your eyes and see that, then did it exist before you thought about it? Well, science also tells us that things come into existence when we put our attention to them. Particles come into existence when we put our double slit experiment. Look it up. Very interesting stuff. When we put our focus on it, we create it. So I'm saying, maybe your living room doesn't even exist until you look at it. And what if your eyes are like literally creating everything in front of you? Like a fucking matrix is just falling out. It's going so fucking fast that you don't even know what's happening. You're like, well, how could that happen? How, how would I not know? This level of the intelligence that's operating on, we can compare that to a ceiling fan. I'd be thinking, well, this guy lost his fucking mind. Ceiling fan, what do you mean? Take your ceiling fan and stop it. Once you stop it, you'll be able to count the individual blades. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Whatever. i never seen a ceiling fan with twelve blades. Mine has four. <coughs> but if I go at a speed of one and I could be counting like there's more, but there's still only four. 
Now, if I go a speed of two or three, well, then I'm counting real fast. And if I go a full speed, it looks like one blade. It looks like one object. There's no longer separateness. It's just one. As soon as I look at it, it's fast. It's got its, its correct vibration and movement. It's just one. You got to slow it down. Just the way you slow down your mind. To be able to see the blades. So when you drop your keys somewhere and then you're able to find them, that's just your mind's kind of glitching in through the parallel universes. What if you could approach them consciously? How would we do that? How would we approach a parallel world consciously? How? Well, we would need some sort of energy. I'm assuming energy would be required because Everything in the world requires some kind of energy to operate. So let's just assume that that in order to uh, to do this, to, to we have to have very very high powerful energy. I mean, this energy has to be like we'll, we'll make our whole city go dark. Energy. Where could we find this energy if we're just your average Joe? Like, where's it going to come from? Uh, how about? Mm. Well, you're at a. I want you to imagine this, okay? All right, just imagine for a second. You're uh, you're walking your. You you went to the grocery store and you're walking your car outside and you as you're going through the crosswalk. Somebody hits your car. Pow! They they slam. Right into it. All of a sudden, you like don't know what the hell's going on because you're just you're you're in this emotional state that that you can't even describe you're fucking angry you're scared you're 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 wondering if you're hurt you're thinking what the fuck did it hit some you got all these emotions you know what that is it's energy now what do you think when you get up and you know last few days i've had a fever of 100 and 101 100 still don't feel too good but I have something I need to get done, so I find the energy to do it. And this is the key. This is how you can train your mind to do shit you don't want to do. Fucking do it good. You know, um, it's easy to quit. Hell, that's the easiest thing you can do. And just lay down and say, that's it. I can't do it. That's also an emotion. That's also a timeline. That's also creating something. That's like you sleeping in the bubble. That's why this show is called Wake Up. Wake up because we want you to awake from this dream that this reality is fixed. We could uh, believe whatever we want to believe. It's our right to do that. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. That's not my goal. My goal is just to speak and let my words be heard whichever way they're heard. You know, um, anybody that wants to definitely test it is welcome to put these things to the test. So back to how in the hell do we do it, all right? So start out with an example of energy. You got hit, your cart got hit, and now you're just like, man, what the fuck? You're pissed. That's energy. How can you feel your insides, your heart beating, your face get flushed red, maybe a little shaking in your hands when you're really angry? Can this anger even be controlled in that moment? Or is it so massive that I could probably, let's say I have a real, real angry moment, Imagine you take all of this powerful energy and I make it into a, an emotion called depression and then I just stretch that shit out as long as I fucking can. So I give myself reason to take, not take action. So I'm consciously creating a timeline that I'm not even fucking aware of. That I'm pointing my energy in a certain direction. I don't even know. Hey, this, you point your energy in that direction, you're going to bite yourself in the ass. I can do that and I don't even know. The fuck? You got to start to really, really open your mind to see where am I placing my attention at? And, and this place that I'm placing my attention at, is it even benefiting me? This is the first step of crossing into that parallel reality that, that you have the ability to create right now. You know, but your thoughts about your current reality and your feelings about your current reality are giving trajectory and momentum and energy for that reality to continue. So if you want to jump into a new timeline, into a new fucking life, you need to start changing that internal direction. Start disciplining yourself to just be open to not knowing. You know, 
I don't want to come out here and say I know all this and that and do this and do that. I say I don't fucking know shit. 